And that's a government which you are part of. This is our year of rediscovering the kingdom of God. This will bless you. And I pray you get this concept properly. When you get this kind of concept and you are studying the Bible, it changes perspectives for you. Say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Say, I am, I am a citizen yes. of the kingdom of God. Kingdom. I am saying so, so you understand. So when you go somewhere and they say, who are you in Christ? You begin to say, I am from CAT Church. It's good to identify with the local assembly, you know that. But you must know who truly you are in Christ. You are a redeemed king, or king and priest unto the Lord. You are an ambassador of the kingdom. You are a kingdom citizen. And if you call that name with an understanding, things change. There are prayers I've been saying this to you. I used to pray for the struggle. I don't pray again. When I understood what it used to be a kingdom citizen. And an ambassador of that, it changed my perspectives. We are coming to that series where we begin to teach it. Praise God. Amen. It changed perspective. Does your child need to beg you to get food from you? When my daughter wanted her attention yesterday, she, she, she got it anyhow. So I had to stop typing and give her the attention to play with the keyboard. There's no protocol, no begging, no see my father if I don't do it. And I know if I don't attend to her, I can't do any other thing. It's not going to disturb us. That's called high level relationship. Citizenship. <laughs> Praise God. Clap for Jesus. Yes. Come on. Now, let's look at some important concepts. I've selected a few, just about 14 of them. And uh, uh, okay, we're managing time very well, very soon I'll be done. Say concept. Concept. Please, I want you to hear this definition carefully. If you understand the definition, it will change your mind forever. Do you understand me? Okay. Say life. life. Do you know life is a concept? Name is a concept. Food is a concept. Dress is a concept. Child is a concept. These are all concepts. So what then is a concept? It simply means an abstract idea or a general idea. Say idea. An idea is a thought in the mind of someone. When the thought is expressed, it's called idea also. <laughs> so an idea is a thing. Jesus Christ. So all ideas have in them life principles. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. John 1 1, the word, word there is actually logos, which means an idea or the express thought of God. Hello? Hello? Say, I'm getting the best. A concept also means a design or a plan. A concept much more means an understanding which you retain well in your mind. An understanding retained in the mind from what experience, reasoning, and imagination. So you must hear something and understand it and retain it in your mind. That way it completely changes your actions. This is why sometimes if I say morality, you who is in the kingdom, you think different. Someone who is in the society thinks different, you know some. Yes. When I say God, sometimes people have different ideas. And so to enhance communication and understanding so that we operate at the same frequency, we need to have our concepts properly defined. So you and me reason the same way. If I don't define concepts to you, whatever I'm teaching right here, you may be thinking that it's the same ideas that we have in, in the secular world, which is not true. A concept also means something that is conceived in the mind. Okay, a concept is that which is created to illustrate an idea. That which is what? You create something to illustrate an idea. So, what is this? It's a Bible. Bible. So you can call this a concept. Yes. It is created, it's been built to illustrate the ideas of God regarding the world, why he created the world, who he is, etc. etc. Amen? Amen? So I'm learning something new. Okay, now the next thing is this. A concept is an expressed thought which reveals the will of the Creator. When the Holy Spirit gave me this combined definition, it changed me. What is that again? Expressed thought that it is what? The will of what? The Creator. <laughs> so when God calls certain words and begins to ask that we behave in a particular way, there is a will, there is a reason for that. Praise God. So let's look at the word conceive. It simply means to take. Much more the word conceive means to envision something, to be pregnant with something. Amen. They say woman has conceived, isn't it? So she could be pregnant with a child. It means to dream of something too. It also means to take into one's mind. Please look at that one in red. That's the one I want you to catch. Man learns with what? 
what do you use for learning? Your mind or the intellect, which is the third aspect of your soul. So to conceive simply means to take something into mind. I'm saying so because what I will be showing you in the next few slides will be something I'd like for you to return. If you return this in your mind, it changes your relationship with God. Amen? Okay. It also means to cause something to begin. How many know that they are about to experience something new other than that? Yes. I prophesy and you don't for you in Jesus' name. Amen. You will experience the life of the kingdom in Jesus' name. Amen. To conceive also means to apprehend something by reasoning or imagination. Say apprehend. Apprehend. It means to grasp it, to understand it. Much more it means to have an opinion also. Oh, oh. Say opinion. Opinion. That's why Jesus said repent for the kingdom of God has come. Change your opinions. Change what you are told about how to get food, how to get married, how to get dresses, how to build a company, how to survive, how to make money. Change all of this and learn the way of the kingdom regarding all these things. Wow. Praise God. So what are the, I put it this way, the demands to adapt or to get the key concepts of the kingdom. You need repentance. Say repentance. Repentance. It simply means to change your way of thinking totally. Will totally change our way of thinking. Say repentance. repentance. No one that Jesus again, like I said, targeted our minds. What is that in Matthew 4 17? What was the first word? He began from that time preaching, saying, Do what? Repent for the kingdom of God. Why should we repent? Because I'm introducing you to a new government, a new system of living. So you need to change your concepts, change your ideas. Change your perspectives. Change things you were taught. Change things you learned. Change the ways. I mean, everything. How many believe we have to repent almost every day? Have you been in a situation where you thought it's not possible for you to come out of it? When you come to that point, always remember this. With God, all things are what? Awesome. Because the kingdom has nothing like a limitation. If you can't change and condition your mind like that, definitely you can't adapt to the kingdom. If you have to also repent, it means that something must have been taught all this while, including religious things. For example, I have struggled to minister healings to someone who believes God makes them to be sick. Think about it. And you need them to repent. This is why the foundation for healings and deliverance and miracles and everything is the word of God. Foundation for prophecy is the word of God. If you don't have the word being taught, preached, you will have a problem. Men will invent their opinions. Praise God. So quickly, let me run through this quickly and catch it very fast because I will go very fast. First aspect of this concept, uh, say the kingdom government. The kingdom government. It means what? The law enforcing body, the controlling power. It also means the administrative body. It means the management and control system. <laughs> it also means the kingdom of God or the government of God itself. The word government means also you can use that to describe all the government of God as the kingdom of God. Amen? So, Isaiah 9 verse 6, Matthew 2 verse 5 to 6. Remember that. Praise God. Next thing is government. For the word to govern, it means to control the behavior of the people. Praise God. To regulate the relationship between people being governed and the governing authority. If you understand it this way, it means your relationship with God will change. Can you go into any king's palace, anyhow. Okay. So government also means to make influence or to have influence over people. It also means to exercise what we call political influence. So government also means to impact a people with your will. This is the most critical definition. Did you see that? So when God says, or when the scripture says, Jesus will govern his people, it means that Jesus will impact the people with his word. Will. The word will means my purpose, my intentions, my desires, what I want for you. So if you understand it this way and you know that you are under the government of God, your question should not be, what is the will of God for me? Pay time. Regarding marriage, what is the will of God regarding finances? What is the will of God regarding financial healings? Uh, regarding healings, excuse me. Regarding financial prosperity, regarding all these aspects of life. Amen? Amen. And when you understand it now, you align it with his intentions. Say power. power. Power means many things. Number one, competence. It means connection. It means ability. 
to create and effect changes. Power is a dynamic force. Power is exactly what you receive in the Holy Spirit, which is where the kingdom of God is in you right now. As one verse 8, you shall receive power to rule. Say dominion. dominion. So power, when you hear that, you have power in you to rule on earth. It simply means what? Abilities. It means competencies. It also means creativity. It means creative abilities. So kingdom power is what distinguishes men. Trust me, everyone sitting right here, including this Chinese power. Yes. Why do people go into court? They want what? Power. Why do people scam? to gain money illegally. They want what? Power. Why is it that people are corrupt right today in government, stealing billions? They want what? Power. Power to do anything they want pay time when they want to do it and anyhow they want to do it. Do you understand me? Okay, now, guess what? In the kingdom, the power is free. Say, I have power. I have power. I'm saying so, so that when next you hear that someone came to press your neck, thank God all of you who have been subject to the teachings of make right, you don't give me that kind of complaint. God's childish. Nobody is supposed to press your neck, whatever. <laughs> Nobody. A sickness comes on your body, says he wants to arise, you tell the sickness you are out. There's a ability in me to get you off a dynamic, a magnetic working force, a drastic force. Acts 1 verse 8. The word described here for power is dynamis in Greek. And the word dynamis simply means miracle working ability. Praise God. Say authority. authority. Authority means the right to use power. Now, it also means delegated power. Can if power has to be delegated, it means there must be a delegating body, right? Yes. This is why in the kingdom we must respect the government of God. Next week, by the grace of God, I want to expose the doctrine of the Trinity, Holy Trinity. Talk about God, you know. We we are introducing. We showed you a government, some few terms. Then we look at the people who are in charge of major things, right? And now we begin to look at lifestyle in the kingdom, aspects of culture, faith, relationship, prayer, and all of that. He will bless you. Praise God. A legal right to use power is for authority. It is possible for people to use power without authority. Authority means that which is authentic. Praise God. Luke 9, verse 1, you've been given authority. Matthew 10, verse 1, you've been given authority. Even Matthew 10, verse 7, Jesus sent us to go preach the gospel of the kingdom. Gospel about the kingdom. Good news about the kingdom. So we are working on delegated authority or delegated power. Say morass. It means that which is good or right conduct. It means acceptable behavior. It means that which is in conformity to the law. Say morass. This will bless you. Jesus is quoted to have said, Think not that I have come to destroy the law. I'm not, but to fulfill it. The word destroy used there in that Matthew 5 17 means to render useless, to demean, to mock it. Simply put it. Say morals. Why am I selecting these careful terms? Because this is the basis for which life functions. Right conduct is called morals. Behavior that is in conformity with established ways, uh, established norms, called morals. So it takes love to do no wrong thing to anyone. Say I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Say I'm blessed. Say immoral. immoral. Definitely means action that breaks the law. Amen? Amen. 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 Killing is an immoral act. Stealing is an immoral act. Life stealing is an immoral act. Why? Because there is a law existing somewhere. Wait a minute now. That also means if someone is not aware of existing law, they are not bound by any law and its consequences. So in Christ, we have been redeemed from the curse of the law. Praise God. That doesn't mean that we are not aware of the law. Because now we have a new nature that resists the world, that resists rather sin and evil. We are not predisposed or prone to doing evil right now. Are we getting it? Are you getting it? Yes. Okay, let's look at wrong. It means an act that does what breaks a moral, moral law that is enforced by a governing authority. Say wrong. Say wrong. Wrong. Okay. It is wrong to kill, steal, and all of that. It is wrong to rebel against the government of God, isn't it? What is wrong again? The definition of wrong? An act that breaks what? A moral law that is enforced by a legal authority. <laughs> okay. Say right. Right. I'm building up to something. We shall hear this and keep for now. Right means behavior or conduct or action that conforms to what? Established form of, or that conforms to the rules. Okay, in place, governing rules. 
Let's, let's read it now. Anyways, behavior that conforms to acceptable or godly norms, that which is morally acceptable as pay what? The godly norms. laws. Action that conforms, not confirm, okay? It conforms, not confirm there. It's a mistake. Action that conforms what? To the will of God. Say law. Law. Norms. Comes from the Greek word, nomos, in the New Testament. It means the principle, it means the rule. Amen? Amen? It also means the act, or the way to live, or act. It means that which controls behavior, guiding one's conduct. Do you know all kingdom laws are built on truth? Praise God. Let me put it to you this way. Why am I using these terms that are quite familiar with us? Can you govern a people without laws? So if you know that you are a child of God and you are a kingdom citizen and you belong to a country, definitely the country should have some governing laws in place. Amen. Amen. If you are not conscious of these governing laws, I'm not saying that you should try to keep the law per se to end the righteousness of God. No, you are already made righteous by reason of the grace of God. But there is now the work of righteousness which you have to do what simply the work of faith which is living right. Nobody must tell you somewhere. I mean, I've seen some people doing some posting somewhere, teaching some strange things like, they should give Christ my life. Why do I need the, uh, you know, to live right again? Or why do I have to be conscious of that? I'm like, this is nonsense. This is nonsense. Human tendency is built as it was corrupted to rebel against established authority. Think about it. There must be the continuous consciousness to do right things, and it takes an understanding of the love of God, because all of the law of God, Jesus fulfilled it in love. Say love. Love. The God kind of love. If you love someone, you do no wrong to them. If you love someone, you do no immoral thing to them, isn't it? If you love someone, you seek to do right and good things to them, isn't it? So if you want the law to live effectively under the law, per se, or if you want to walk in keeping with the established moral law of God. Just walk in love. Trust me. You'll find all the other things flowing. So the scripture says, he who loves one another has kept the entire law. Say law. Say principle. Yeah. Principle means a universally acceptable truth. Yeah. The benefits. Praise God. Who is God? Let me summarize that as well. And say God. God. God is the uncreated creator of the whole universe. The supreme majestic ruler of the whole universe. The owner of all things. Beside him, there is no other God. Our God, oh Jesus. This is the man who speaks and it becomes. Everyone is looking for God. When they don't find God, they create theirs and worship. God is invisible, yet visible through men. He is the man who is with you right now and in you right now. God himself is law. Praise God. Say God is law. And the word of God, being the king of this country called the kingdom of God, is law. And if a king rules by laws, certainly there is a place where the law is contained. Say the Bible. So this Bible is actually the law of God. Hallelujah. Say I'm blessed. Let's conclude with these two ones, this remaining one. Say constitution. It's an integration of the laws of the man. The highest law of the land is called the Constitution. This is what presidents, even human presidents, they swear to do what? Protect now. So what actually protects the right of the citizens is what? Constitution. Praise God. Now, say kingdom citizen. Kingdom citizen. It's a legal member of the country. A kingdom citizen has rights. A kingdom citizen has privileges. A kingdom citizen also has Praise God, so like we have more preachers now. Praise God. A king of sin also has obligations. Say obligations. Obligations. Say obligations. obligations. That is the part you may not like so much, and many other people who think that when they are already redeemed, uh, there is nothing they should do. Trust me, there are works you do in keeping with your salvation. It is written, walk at your salvation with fear and trembling. So every kingdom citizen has obligations. There is what you do to contribute. Um, can anyone from anywhere just come to you and demand to take money from you who is not your child? Hmm? Even my child must explain. <laughs> Praise God. Say law, kingdom laws. 
kingdom works. This is the universally acceptable principle for human behavior. Do you know even natural human governments, some of them value the Ten Commandments, the moral law of God? They know if this is, this is why the greatest message Jesus taught, that Matthew 5, about the Beatitudes, has been the foundation for right living till next world. The likes of Muhammad Gandhi, trust me, they benefited from the Beatitudes. And Jesus, for the record, must never be qualified like any other leader. By the way, can I say something quickly about God again? It's above all correction. He cannot be corrected. Amen. Amen. That means he can never be wrong. Praise God. Laws, say for kingdom laws simply means the rules for living. So the Bible is not just a book of knowledge, they say. It's much more a book of what to do. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Kingdom laws represent the wisdom of God for a moral society. Show me any school where the children are very rebellious. Show me a country where rebels are common. I will show you a country that has replaced kingdom laws with human laws in the name of freedom of rights, human rights. Are we understanding that? Yes. So the foundation for a morally sound society is what? The governing laws of the kingdom. More so, God's moral laws have been left in life principle. Check those references given right there already like Psalms 19. Psalms 119 and all of that. The commandments of the Lord are right. Can you imagine they make your face radiant? They teach you, they protect you, they preserve you, they deliver you from immorality and all of that. So if a country, if this country, for example, is struggling with ministers or government of just or corrupt, they should invite us for a talk and we'll have a one-week intensive seminar and teach them the foundation for right governance from a godly or kingdom perspective. It will change perspectives. Praise God. Yes. Praise God. Amen. Let's look at the concluding talk right here. Now, if the kingdom of God is a domain ruled by God through the hearts of men, and I know that God has a government, and God is actually the governor, Jesus, the king, every government has a constitution, isn't it? And there are laws. That means there is no government without a law. Amen. And there is no king without a people to govern or to be a king of. There is also no king without a kingdom. It means kingdom laws, number one, they are not democratic laws. So you cannot vote them in and out. They are never old fashioned. The uniqueness about the law of God is that it cannot be changed. And the foundation for right living is living in conformity with the established norms principle. Do you know love itself is a law? Praise God. So it is only in religion and democracy and other forms of governments they think they should modify the word of God. If you understand this, this conclusion, I leave it at that level. You are approach to God and relationship with God changes. Praise God. Praise God. I will talk about that one day. Okay, so kingdom concepts are legal terms, they are administrative terms, they are governing terms, and there is no government without a law. And the kingdom of God is actually the government of God, and God rules by his laws. In conclusion, the law of God cannot be replaced. Number two, God cannot modify his word. Number three, God does not change his word, which is his law. Number four, unlike human kingdoms that are subject to changes, the kingdom of God does not change, it's everlasting. It is the absolute utopia for everyone. In this kingdom, men grew up with good morals. So the foundation for building a successful, sustainable society is what? Hearkening to the work of God. And every country of enemies, the kingdom system of government or the idea for salvation. The time comes, I prophesy, that this church ministry will influence national leadership. And international leadership. Mark my words. Amen. I speak this prophetically in Jesus' name. Amen. May God bless you. Thanks for listening. May God bless you. And I pray this word affect you. Father, fill them with the insights. Yes. Reveal this truth to them while they go from here. Distinguish them. I thank you because the word has been given out. And I bless your name for anyone who got something new today. It's by grace where your presence worshiping indeed. We always acknowledge this. Thank you for instructing us this season, helping us to rediscover what our original country is all about. We bless your name, in Jesus' name. Amen.